If you enjoyed this video on Buck Owens, we encourage you to visit buckowens.com, buckowensfans.webs.com, and if you're ever in Bakersfield, California, the Crystal Palace. There's even an official Buck Owens channel right here on YouTube. Links provided in the video description below. Here's a guy that we had with us a few months back, and he broke it up pretty good. And I said before, he's one of my very favorite country singers and one of my favorite people also. Not only do uh, the folks seem to enjoy him that watch in, but the folks in the crew around here kind of dig old Buck Owens. Say howdy to him. Buck Owens! Buck Owens. Alvis Edgar Buck Owens, who at age four nicknamed himself after the family mule, was born August 12, 1929 in Sherman, Texas. His father was a sharecropper and the family lived in deep poverty. They headed toward California as part of the Dust Bowl migration in the late 1930s. But when their trailer broke down, they settled in Arizona near Phoenix. Owens worked in cotton and maize fields and dropped out of school around the eighth or ninth grade. Well, there was hardly any work. Uh, you know, I remember hearing them say that my daddy got $16 a month. You know, it was in the time of the Great Depression in the 30s. And, and it was, I remember well, it was tough. In 1945, Owens, who loved music and learned to play steel and string guitars, started performing on local radio stations and in Phoenix area honky-tonks. That same year, he met country singer Bonnie Campbell, who would soon become his first wife. Around 1951, Buck, Bonnie, and their two kids moved out to Bakersfield, California, where Owens would go on to pioneer the famous Bakersfield Sound a rocking, twangy version of country music that defied and rivaled the smooth instrumentations coming out of Nashville at the time. During the early to mid-50s, Owens played guitar for artists such as Farron Young, Tommy Sands, Wanda Jackson, Tennessee Ernie Ford, and Gene Vincent. Played on uh, Gene Vincent's A Lot, A Lot of Lovin' and Tommy Sands, uh, all those things, and I, and I really enjoyed it. It was, um, it was a big kick. In 1956, Owens met singer Wynn Stewart, with whom he would co-write such songs as Excuse Me, I Think I've Got a Heartache and Foolin' Around. Oh, that you've been fooling around on me right from the start. Well, I'll take back my ring and I'll take back my heart. In 1957, Owens signed a deal with Capitol Records, for whom he would record a cover of Tommy Collins' 1954 hit, You Better Not Do That. But that and another single with the label fizzled. Owens gave up his country star dreams and moved to Tacoma, Washington. My only problem was I would work for four or five days. I might even work every day for two weeks, and then, but then all of a sudden, you know, I wouldn't hear, you wouldn't get a call for three weeks, you know. And I was married and had a couple of kids. And During a trip to Bakersfield, Owens recorded the ballad Second Fiddle. It went on to reach the number 24 slot on the Billboard charts. That single was followed by the top 10 hit, Under Your Spell Again, in the fall of 1959. You've got me dreaming those dreams again, thinking those things again. I've got to take you back just one more time. While still in Washington, Owens met 16-year-old fiddler Donald Eugene Ulrich, best known as Don Rich, who would become his musical alter ego and a major contributor to his best recordings. By 1960, Owens had moved back to Bakersfield and released his debut album, Buck Owens, a year later. In 1962, Owens assembled the Buckaroos, which included Don Rich and a young bass player named Merle Haggard. Their first single, Act Naturally, shot to the top of the charts and paved the way for 15 consecutive number one hits out of a total of 25 number one hits. Most notably, I've got a tiger by the tail, it's plain to see. I won't be much when you get through with me. Happiness, only happiness, love's gonna live here again. Smile until the end of time makes my heart feel puffy. Will I get a double pay? Again. And before, before you, go. you go, be sure you know how much I love you and that I'm sorry for the Owens continued.
continued his streak through the late 1960s with chart toppers such as Waiting in Your Welfare Line, Open Up Your Heart, and Sam's Place. You can always find me down at Sam's Place For that's where the gang all hangs around that's In 1966, Owens began starring in his own syndicated TV show, Buck Owens Ranch. He was still working on the show when he signed on to host another variety show, Hee Haw, in 1969. Hey, Jerry! Yeah? Have you been out to Opera Land yet? Yeah, and you wouldn't believe the crowd. Hmm. I said to this one woman, have you ever seen such confusion? Hmm. And she said, well, mister, you ought to know you're in the ladies' room. <laughs> While his own show ran until 1973, Owens would remain on Hee Haw until 1986. He would later blame the show for the demise of his recording career. However, in a 1989 interview, Owens reported that he went into a deep depression following the tragic death of Don Rich in a motorcycle accident in 1974. After the incident, Owens had one more top 10 hit with great expectations. Sensations and tender temptations and great He remained mostly out of the limelight and concentrated on Hee Haw and his many successful business ventures in radio and music publishing. Owen's music career was revitalized in the late 1980s following a duet with country superstar Dwight Yoakam. Yoakam had asked Owens to join him on a re-recording of Buck's 1972 song Streets of Bakersfield. How many of you that's just me? The following year, Owens and former Beatle Ringo Starr recorded a duet of Act Naturally, which Ringo had also recorded with the Beatles in 1965. I think Ringo is the most approachable, famous person I've ever met. As the 1990s approached, Owens mainly performed at the Crystal Palace, a country and western nightclub, restaurant, and museum that he had built in Bakersfield. In fact, Owens, who developed throat cancer in 1993 and suffered from other ailments, was scheduled to perform at the Crystal Palace on March 25, 2006. But he felt ill and told the buckaroos to go on without him. As he headed to his car, he met a couple from Oregon who told him that they had traveled over 700 miles just to see him perform again. Moved by their enthusiasm, Owens walked back into the venue and performed his full 90-minute set. That night, Buck Owens passed away in his sleep. He was 76 years old. He was buried in a mausoleum at Greenlawn Cemetery in Bakersfield. Amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now Buck Owens, the country music rebel who dared to buck Nashville's trends and write and perform the type of music he wanted, was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1996. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and to subscribe.